Fred had some property in uh, Evanston, and uh, uh, I think it was around 63 or 64 I had met him. I had just uh, come back from San Francisco, and uh, uh, my best friend lived a couple of doors down from Fred. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who Fred was, but uh, you know, every time I go by this guy's house, there's all this music coming out of the house. You know? mm -hmm. Saxophone and you know, train and I, I was playing B flat clarinet and uh, <clears throat> I'm seeing train and this guy named Lil Rock in Oakland who later turned out to be uh Farrell Sanders. Oh wow. <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> You know, I was about 18, 19. I, I switched to alto. Mm -hmm. And Fred saw me come by one day, going, going to my friend's house. And he, he said, man, see, so you got an alto, you know. Mm -hmm. You come outside. And um, <clears throat> we just struck up a conversation, you know. And I, you know, I went out in the house, and he started playing a lot of uh, Ben Webster and Chewberry and mm -hmm. these kind of guys. And... Uh, he was working on uh, mouthpieces. He was like a mad scientist, you know, and doing that. And, uh, you know, he started <clears throat> teaching me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, laid me on the floor, um, uh, t taught me how to breathe, mm -hmm. put books mm -hmm. on my chest, you know. And, uh, I've been through that. Yeah. And, um, you know, about a month and a half later, I joined the band with Brimfield. Mm -hmm. He was in it. And... Uh, what was the drummer's name? Um, uh, well, uh, Arthur Reed? No, no, it was um, from Emerson. Um, but anyway. <clears throat> Not Bucky. No. So that was my first experience, you know, in, in a band. And uh, I always liked the way, uh, you know, Fred led his life. You know, he, mm. he's a cool guy. Never got high or anything, you know. And... Mm -hmm. and um, mm. You know, that's that's how it started. <clears throat> and uh, a few years later, I, I went back to San Francisco. Uh, I'm a child of the 60s, you know, mm -hmm. and went through that. Uh, I was a hipster among hippies, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, went through that whole thing. And then I came back in 75, uh, joined Fred again. Mm -hmm. You know, so we've had a close association <clears throat> on and off, maybe 40 years, you know. Wow. Yeah, 38, 40 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what, how old were you when you first met Fred, you know, back in... I was about 18. 18. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was, you know, very impressed with uh, with the jazz, what the musicians were doing, you know, and, uh, um, you know, wanted to be like Miles, and then I just, just you know, experience and train and... <clears throat> And Pharaoh Sanders, that kind of, you know, that side of the music, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just, you know, encouraged me. And, uh, and Fred, he always had that big, beautiful sound, and mm -hmm. he uh, always stressed um, sound production. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so I got, you know, a very firm, um, some very firm fundamentals mm -hmm. uh, about that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I was a youngster, and... Uh, Fred was uh, uh, a little older, but uh, always, uh, he was generous, mm -hmm. and he was always right. giving, right. Yeah. you know. Okay. Billy, how about you? When, when did you first uh, make your I went to a, a jam session once at the Y mm -hmm. in Evanston, okay. in the basement, mm -hmm. and Fred was there, mm -hmm. same time, mm -hmm. and we played. Like what he heard. Okay. The very next day or two, three days, I got a call. Mm -hmm. That was him. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, he wanted to hang out. He wanted to play something. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I'm still flattered about that. Mm -hmm. And Will just said about sound. He say I got a big sound. I guess that's why playing with Fred. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have a big sound, I, I would have been drowned out. <laughs> so I, I had to play. You know. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think what I've been saying that I'm most appreciative about Fred Anderson is he didn't teach me what avant-garde, if you, I can use that term, jazz mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. He taught me what avant-garde jazz was not. Mm -hmm. okay. It was not jazz that don't swing, mm -hmm. and it was not about who can make the phone.
funny sound with it, huh? Right. Okay. It wasn't about that. It was about making musical sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just music that was freed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And 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 I I I have don't have much patience with guys that are trying so hard to be different. Mm -hmm. They forget about being musical. Mm -hmm. Forget about that they're playing music. I went and heard a, 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 a set with Fred recently, Richard right Velvet, and all these so-called avant-garde players were mm -hmm. playing at it, you know, so-called avant-garde players. Mm -hmm. And Fred got up there on the stage. He didn't. He said nothing. Mm -hmm. But when he put that horn in his mouth, it was like he was saying, "Hey, this is how you do it." Mm -hmm. And, and people ask me all the time, who did you study with? Mm -hmm. I said, I got it, what I little I have, I got it from the conservatory of Fred Anderson. Everything I know about music to this day, about harmony theory, mm -hmm. you know, I, I learned from Fred. Here and there, playing around with people like Jack Dees and that, Herbie Hancock, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. But mainly from Fred. Wow. You know? Yeah. And he taught me something which my old trumpet teacher would agree with. Mm -hmm. He says, I don't care what you're playing, if you don't have a good sound, it would mean nothing. And between my old teacher, he was a legit player, you know. You, you know uh, he couldn't play a lick of jazz, but he taught me about the horn. Mm -hmm. Fred taught me about the music. Mm -hmm. The Fred's training for me was more theoretical. Mm -hmm. I was at a jam session in the Y mm -hmm. in Evanston. Uh -huh. We have, you know, at that time we had the black Y and the white Y. Yeah. Oh really? Okay. And uh, Fred was there. And what year was that? About fifty-six, fifty-seven. And uh, Fred was there, and we exchanged numbers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's flattering to me, I must have impressed him because the next day or two, he called me. Mm -hmm. This is Fred, the guy you met at the sound session the other night. Mm -hmm. And we start hanging out. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much from, from him, mm -hmm. you know, about music and about life. You know, but uh, he gave me the theoretical aspect of, of the music, you know, the harmony and the theory thing. Okay. Everything I know about music I learned from Fred. Mm -hmm. And I like to say that I saw him at a, well, he taught me not so much what avant-garde jazz, if I may use that term, but not so much what it was, mm -hmm. but what it was not. Mm -hmm. It is not jazz that don't swing. Mm -hmm. And it is not making funny, funny, no, funny songs with your horn. Right. That's not music, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I was with Fred over in, uh, we were in, in uh, Michigan, right outside of uh, Detroit. And there was a panel discussion, and they were interviewing uh, Rashawn Bolenkirk. Mm -hmm. And he said, Cat, come by my house. Want me to show him something. Mm -hmm. He knew all the hip honks and squeaks. Mm -hmm. My uncle couldn't play no blues. <laughs> and I've never forgotten that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's got to, if you call yourself playing jazz, a lot of people don't like that word. You know, but I'm, I'm a firm believer in what Duke said a long time ago. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I was at the Velvet fairly recently and I heard all these so-called avant-garde jazz wannabes. Mm -hmm. And it was just pathetic. Mm -hmm. And Fred got up there on the stage. Fred and Hamid and Harrison. You know what that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So they got up there and like Fred picked up his horn, like he didn't say it with his mouth, mm -hmm. but
but you could hear him saying, what you can hear him thinking that, okay, y'all, this is how you do it. And he proceeded to show them how it's done, you know. And it's pretty easy to do. You got people like Hamid and, and, and Harrison behind you, you know. And I said, I'm, I'm sitting there to myself, I hope everybody's hearing this, you know. And he, you know, um, Fred was telling me that uh, a guy named Kid Jordan, you know him, oh, sure. Lenore Robin, you know, mm -hmm. and he was looking for a so-called free player, you know, mm -hmm. and he was talking to the late great Eddie Harris. He said, I'm looking for somebody that's playing free. Mm -hmm. Eddie Harris said, hey, man, I know just the man you want to see. I know somebody who's been playing free since the Second World War. <laughs> he was talking about Fred. This is coming from Eddie Harris. Yeah, right, sure. You know, mm -hmm. Eddie Harris steered kid to Fred Anderson. <coughs> wow. Yeah. What and a great I, partnership they've had. Yeah. yeah. And I I tell people all the time, they say, Where did, who'd you study with? Well, who'd you study with? What's your credentials? I say, I graduated from the conservatory of Fred Anderson. Yeah. And when he introduced me to Vaughn Freeman, we were at a session in, and these guys were on the stage playing. And Vaughn said, get on up there, boy. I said, I'm not ready for, for people like that. He said, boy, do you see that stage? I said, yes, sir. That's your music school. Get up there. Get up there, boy. And how old were you at that time? About 19. 19. Yeah. And uh, I've been blessed of all through the years of being able to play with some of the greatest musicians around, mm -hmm. greatest local musicians. Mm -hmm. Well, once or twice I played with a giant like Lionel Hampton or somebody like that. You know? mm -hmm. Now he's one of the nicest men I ever worked with, uh -huh. Hamp. And I, I, I took, I stood up to take a solo. I tried to get out of that job. I didn't think I was ready to play with no Lionel Hampton, Ray of, uh, not Ray of, uh, 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 the the big band uh, uh, drummer, Red Saunders. Red Saunders mm -hmm. got me that gig. Mm -hmm. so I called Red up. I said, Red, I can't play with, with, with Lionel Hampton. He said, Man, if you can play with me, you can play with Red, but Lionel Hampton. Mm -hmm. you go ahead and make the gig. You know? And pointed at me to take a <coughs> solo. I said, oh, God. Mm -hmm. I stood up to take a solo, mm -hmm. trembling, you know, knees going like that, you know, taking a solo. And I could hear this guy standing behind me. Ah, blow, blow, blow. Ah, 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 yeah, blow, blow, blow. You know how Hamp. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, and I heard him lean over to his drummer. Hey, man, this guy can blow, okay? Wow. That, that was yeah. one of my biggest thrills, compliments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in life. Wow, yeah, that's great. Who are some of the other uh, musicians that you played with, uh, you know, besides Fred? That, uh... I played with a guy named George Hunter. Mm -hmm. And you know who got me in that band? The late, great Donald Merrick. You know the guy that got shot dead in, in California? Really? He played sax with Earth, Wind, and Fire, you know. I met Donald Myers, Louis Satterfield, uh, Fip Ricard, who ended up playing trumpet for Sammy Davis Jr. Mm -hmm. You know, another guy named uh, Earl Crosley, John Neely. John Neely had played with Lionel Hampton, too. Mm -hmm. You know, Earl Crosley played a lot like uh, Stanley Turrentine, you know. Great, great, <coughs> great, great, great players. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these guys had been with, with people like Casey. These were musicians mm -hmm. with a capital M. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I belonged with them, but I was. That was another very valuable music school. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can get so only so much in, 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 in a conservatory or studying. Mm -hmm. Without practical experience, it, it, mean, it means nothing. Most of what I learned, I learned right on the stage. Right. So, in your experience with you know playing all these wonderful uh, musicians, um, 
you know, with Fred Anderson, how does that experience, you know, relate to the others? You know, where where would you place that? How would you describe, you know, the meaning of that uh, in relation to the other? Uh, uh, well, I put it like Joe Siegel put it to me: before you can get free, mm -hmm. you got to know what you're getting free from. I got that from Joe Siegel. Mm -hmm. You can't start out like playing, trying to play like Ornette Coleman or, or Eric Dawson. Mm -hmm. You got to listen to what's gone on before. Mm -hmm. And I think the person who I admire so much for having a broad sense of where the music has been and where it is now and where it's going is Wynton Marcellus, mm -hmm. great musician. Mm -hmm. And he's so knowledgeable <coughs> about the music and it's history, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, that's something I, I like so much about him. He's one of my favorite players, by the way. Wynton Marcellus. Uh -huh. Yeah, oh, he's an incredible player. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's one of my favorite. Yeah, and, and so much more. Well, what I like about Wynton, he is, he brought the interest of jazz back to the young black people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Back in the 80s, you know, Jazz was dying, all the young guys coming up there, either going into R&B or something like that. Right. They weren't going into jazz. Mm -hmm. And Winton brought them back to it. Right. Yeah. I'll always respect him for that, mm -hmm. you know. But it's a shame that America, mm -hmm. black America in particular, mm -hmm. doesn't know about people like Miles Davis, mm -hmm. John Coltrane. You know, these are household words to us. Right. But to most of the people coming up, they mm -hmm. don't know anything about that. Yeah, it's a tragedy. That, it's uh, just so sad. That there's such a national ignorance of, uh, I mean, these, these are great people. They're like, you know what Dizzy this, said? This story <coughs> you know what Dizzy said? Jazz is too good mm. for America. <coughs> really? Dizzy said that? Wow, yeah. oh, that's heavy. I had the pleasure and honor of shaking hands with him once. I was like, the guy I played, I played with, George Hunter. Mm -hmm. He introduced me to Dizzy because he used to play with Dizzy. Uh -huh. Hey man, this is Burks. My friend, this is my friend Bill Burfield, Burks. And I'm going, <laughs> shaking Dizzy's hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was, of all the guys that I've met, mm -hmm. I won't say played with, I didn't get to play with him, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but I've met him. And had the biggest heart. And everybody that has been around Dizzy agrees with me, says the same thing. You can't meet a nicer, you couldn't meet a nicer, a nicer man. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. More, more wonderful human being. Yeah. 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 On top of being such an incredible genius musician as well. A bad, bad ass genius. <laughs> Innovator, whatever, whatever, whatever else. Whatever you want to say. Sure. Nobody <laughs> else could have kept another other trumpet player, yeah. could have really kept up with Bird. Mm -hmm. I can't think of anybody else could could have played with Bird, but Dizzy, mm. nobody. Well, yeah, let's get back to you, and you know, could you, uh, you know, explain a little bit about what, uh, you know, your early uh, playing situation uh, was like with Fred Anderson, and uh, I mean, you were involved with uh, like the formation of the AACM, weren't you, or you know, part of that? <coughs> or were you Not really. I, I I joined the AACM later, okay. actually a couple of years ago. Um, <coughs> Um, but when they were uh, making their great forge, you know, I had gone out to Frisco. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was just a, a learning experience. Um, uh, just, just playing next to Fred. Uh, I, I always liked the way he was, he was so focused, mm -hmm. you know. He was so focused. I mean, it, it's, it's really, uh, you know, what he's done is just been incredible and nobody knew that he would become a club owner uh, mm -hmm. entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, you know because mm -hmm. I we went to I went to a session with Fred once and uh, the fifth jacks I don't know if you were there Billy but they all kicked, the time man all the time you know Fred was playing that stuff that uh, this is before net hit or net mm -hmm. and he they told him to get off the stage and mm -hmm. you know and I was a youngster and I said oh my god really? you know is this serious you know mm -hmm. and 
the guy that you know told him to get off the stage is no longer playing, but Fred is thriving, you know, and like uh, <clears throat> like great uh, old wine, he just gets better and better. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it was just a, you know a lot of uh, scales and chords and exercises, and um, my thing is I wasn't always I was a freer player, but I, I wanted to play in too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And, and now I try to straddle. I, I really want to blur the line. I want to get in between mm -hmm. and use elements from uh, both genres. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, being, uh, when I left uh, in the 60s, uh, I did a stint with uh, Woody Shaw back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> he's a great innovator, too. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah he was so much like Fred, they were so generous in, in giving, you know, uh, writing stuff down for you all the time. You know, I still got stuff I'm working on from, from Wood. Um, but, you know, he uh, always stressed the fact that, yeah, like Billy said, you know, you can't be free until you learn where you're beginning free from, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, his... His thing was so, uh, he loved Freddie, Freddie Hubbard. Mm -hmm. But Freddie was like a diatonic player, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and in order to distinguish himself from Freddie, he came up with this interval concepts mm -hmm. of using wider intervals, fourths and fifths, minor thirds. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Woody Shaw. And uh, so that was an important part of uh, who I became, you know, just being able to hear that stuff, you know, in, in, in the playing. And I, you know, try to utilize that <clears throat> uh, today. I mean, I, it was a real fertile period back there in the, in the 60s, 60s, early 70s with Eddie Henderson and mm. uh, Joe Henderson, Prince Lachey, uh, all those guys. Um, we were all hanging out, and Bobby Hutchison, and mm -hmm. uh, you know they were they were freely giving uh, giving the music mm -hmm. up, you know, and uh, for anybody who was <clears throat> interested. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then later on, Billy and I uh, we kind of jumped ship from Fred's band, and we formed our own band called the Billy Band, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> With Hamid and Jim Cooper yeah. and Alan Eric, and uh, we played the first Chicago Jazz Festival. Uh, was it 1980? Something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was a I great. I played it a... once before that, though, with Fred, before we did it. Uh huh. You know, I've done two of those with Fred. Mm -hmm. Okay. John 1980. Uh, that was a good that. band. Yeah, better band than that. Then I realized at the time, I th did Joe give you the toast tapes? The yes, CD? I've uh, devoured those you, tapes. You didn't, you didn't realize we were playing that much stuff, did you? Really? <laughs> really didn't. So we've had several configurations yes. uh, mm -hmm. of the Billy Band. Uh, we do a thing called, uh, with the East-West Band. Mm -hmm. um, Tell them who's Tatsu, in that. Tatsu and uh, Nori Tanaka. So it's uh, the oh. East meets West. <clears throat> and uh, you know we we, we keep uh, trying to move the the music forward. Uh, Fred is uh, has such a strong presence. Mm -hmm. You know, there's such a strong um, Chicago has a real appetite for alternative music. Right. Unbelievable. I mean, I, I've never I haven't seen that anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and his presence is so strong. He's always been here. Um, if there wasn't a velvet, I don't know. <laughs> He'd have something, because, you know, he tried the birdhouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we played it. We, we played, played the birdhouse. Yeah. So, what was the birdhouse like? I mean, can you describe, you know, what, what that scene was Well, like? it, was a, was... it was basically a concert hall. Mm -hmm. Fred sold with no liquor. Mm -hmm. Concert club. Okay. Oh, yeah, concert club. That's, better. That's a better term. Mm -hmm. No booze, you know. And he had a lot of trouble with that because the police were always raiding the place, you know. 
And I'm trying to figure out what they're raiding. We won't, he wasn't serving any booze. Right. Why, why, what were they trying to raid? Good music or something? Or uh, what that's, that's what I think. <laughs> it seems really... Wrong, yeah. wrong place at the wrong time. That, you know. You know. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what is that area? Was it Germantown? We, we were, yeah. And they didn't understand, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was wrong. You, yeah. You're right. Wrong place at the wrong time. It, it was... Well ahead of its time, its time, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, purely a listening room, rugs on the floor, uh, seats lined yeah, up, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. concert style. <clears throat> the sound was great in there. That was, that's a rare because uh, they had rugs on the floor. Usually, rugs on the floor. The sound is n n nil, mm -hmm. especially with my horn. Mm -hmm. It just sucks up all the. Every every note that comes out of your home, the rug sucks it up. Right. But it didn't do that in there. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Good good sound, good acoustics in there mm -hmm. for playing and for listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we helped build that club, and uh, I always said, "Damn, Fred, don't you know where you're at? You know, over here." But uh, uh, it was a great club, a great experience. But that lasts about a year. Yeah. Uh, about right. a year before uh, Police Chief cut it, you know, <clears throat> shut it down and yeah. you know, yeah. put pressure on the owners, mm -hmm. you know, to... Uh, Didn't they raid us almost every night? The uh, police, I mean? Uh, they were very frequent. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, and, and for about how long a period of the time did that last then? I mean, these constant raids and everything, I mean... That's about a year, I think. Yeah, about a year. Good Lord. You know, before he... Uh, and they, they Let never, it go. And they never got the message that it was just all about music. It's all about music. Uh, you know, there was the interracial mixing, uh, that kind of I thing. I think was, that had a lot to do with it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 Um, we weren't ready for that either. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunate. We just, one day we opened up and there we were, you know. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was like going to the moon, you know, for them, yeah. you know. Yeah. And unfortunately some of the neighbors freaked out or something. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, now, you've both known Fred for well over 40 years, almost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, both of you. Uh, certainly, you must have, both have many stories uh, about Fred. Uh, you know, can you, you know, relate a couple that, uh, you know, shed some light on Fred's uh, character and, and who he is? You know, can you remember some times with Fred where, you know, you know, just... I remember going to Europe with Fred. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Going to Europe with Fred and Hamid. Right. That and, was, and it was also with uh, George Lewis, right? Uh, no, no, no. George Lewis had, was in the group uh, that played over on uh, Wells. Mm -hmm. It's called the Foundation okay. Church. That's how we got to Europe. A guy named Dieter Glavishnik. You ever heard of him? Oh, sure. <coughs> Dieter came in and heard us play. Mm -hmm. Would you like to come and play mm -hmm. in Europe with us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The rest of the, yeah. When, 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 do, when do the plane leave, you know? <laughs> you know? And that, to me, was a learning experience because being a, being a veteran, you know, mm -hmm. I'm walking around the, among the German people, mm -hmm. and I'm saying to myself, and they're so warm and so friendly. Mm -hmm. The biggest jazz fans I've ever known in life on this planet were in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking around and I'm saying, we used to be <coughs> at war mm -hmm. with these people. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I, was, I, could, I could walk around by myself mm -hmm. at night. I wouldn't do that in Chicago, you know. That's right. I wouldn't do it in Chicago, That's right. but I'm doing it in Germany. Mm -hmm. That was in uh, Hamburg, right? That you all over Hamburg, Frankfurt. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, all over Austria. Mm -hmm. Wow. The place I did not like was the place that I thought I would would love the most, and I ended up hating it more, more so than any place that I've ever been in Europe. Really? That was Paris. Is that right? I didn't like Paris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Parisians, but 
I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, John uh, Hannah Taylor, you know him? Out the, the soprano player. <coughs> and I was telling him I didn't like Paris. I didn't like France. Mm -hmm. And he said, what part of France were you in? I said, I was in, I was in Paris. Mm -hmm. He said, you've never been to the south of France? You've never been to the Riviera? I said, no. He said, look, brother, to compare all of France with Paris mm -hmm. is like comparing all of the United States with New York City. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that place either, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. But, uh, you know, the, the Germany was the warmest, mm -hmm. warmest place that I've been. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love the food, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Funny story, we got time. They told me that a German woman was in the audience. We were playing in Hamburg. Mm -hmm. And there's a German woman in the audience. And she wants to meet you. She loves the music. I said, oh, I'm fine, you know. Mm -hmm. And she walks up to me, and her husband's standing right there. Mm -hmm. And she walks up and kisses Oh, I love your music. And she kisses me right in the mouth mm -hmm. in front of her husband. I'm saying, uh oh, I'm from Chicago, right? I know that's trouble, you know. Uh oh, I'm going to look for her husband to start going in his pocket. And he looks at me and says, Vasa stamata. I said, hey, well, where I come from, you kiss another man's wife in front of him. He, he wants to do something to you. You know what he said? Well, this is not Chicago. I kiss you too. He kisses me right in the chest. Uh, and I'm, I'm saying, wow, man, what is it? <laughs> I'm not ready for this. Nah, so, man, that's exactly what I said. I ain't ready for this. <laughs> These people are freaky dicky. What is it? You know? <laughs> but they're like that's that. Right. That is fun. The, the, the Germans are like that. Yeah, yeah, they're very, yeah. They're just very warm and outgoing. Yeah. Yeah. I lived there for five years. Uh, from well, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, great people. I, I love Wonderful them. people. Yeah. Yeah. I love German cooking. Mm. Oh, me too. The roast braten oh, with yeah. the palm fritz and the beer. Oh, yeah. That's good. Sauerbraten, <laughs> forget it. Man. That's, that's hmm. yeah. they, This fine schnitzel, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Early AACM recording sessions. Uh, I mean, you were on... Some of them. Yeah, the, the Joseph Jarman. Yeah, you song, song 4. four. Yeah. And I guess if it were the seasons, were you on it also? Or no? I don't think so, but I was on Song 4. Yeah, Song 4, yeah. And a little Fox run, of course, yeah, yeah. Fred's. Me so. and Fred. That was the first record session for Fred and myself. Uh-huh, okay. Can you, uh, you know, describe what that recording session was like a little bit? Well, the music at that time was very experimental. And so we were just trying to express what we felt, what mm -hmm. we were thinking at the time. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what, what music is about, expressing what you think and what you feel, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that as a very learning ex experience, you know, playing with Charmin. Mm -hmm. When I got, I got overseas again with, with, with Don Morier, and Jarman was taking me all around and showing me, you know, what was what in, in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. They had lived, you know, the Ireland songs, but they had lived in uh, Paris, I think, seven years, you know. Mm -hmm. And so Jarman was telling me about what it is, what it used to be like and what it is now. Mm -hmm. And he was saying how different it was, mm -hmm. you know. Huh. And Jarman took me all around and showed me, you know, he showed me these guys that go around with the big black, Boots on, all dressed all in black. Mm -hmm. They're not the gendarmes. They're, they're, they're like stormtroopers. Mm. And Jarman said, whatever you do, this is in Paris, don't, whatever you do, don't run afoul mm -hmm. of these guys right here. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't have to tell me that but once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For both of you, what, what do you think makes Fred Anderson uh, such a significant voice in uh, in the music. Dedication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perseverance. <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of, um, when, when you guys went over to Europe that first time, um, I mean, I noticed Fred when he came back, it was a new sense of identity, you know, because he was so well received. And here, uh, you know, he was scraping by and uh, and people were not, you know, really, he had a smaller audience. Mm -hmm. But 
I, I noticed it right away. I'll never forget it. You know, had that his chest was sticking out. He felt it was a breakthrough for Fred, and mm -hmm. he began to uh, <clears throat> forge a real career. You know? That's because the Europeans treated him like he was somebody. Uh, exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, and you know they have such a strong sense of uh, of art. You know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, no matter who you are, you know, if, you, if you're if you doing it, they uh, want to uh, applaud it. And yeah. he came back, and uh, that's when, <clears throat> not shortly after that, they put the birdhouse together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and All the while he was over there, that's what he was talking about. Right. Coming back to America and getting his own place. Right. Yeah. You know? So that was a, that was a, a major breakthrough for him. And, um, and I began to take him more seriously, mm -hmm. you know, as he... <clears throat> began to uh, expand on his career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I did too. Yeah. What are the uh, qualities of Fred's playing that you both find really appealing? What, what do you think? His sound, for one. Okay. And his fertile mind. Mm -hmm. And Will can attest to this. It's very frustrating sometimes standing next to him and he'll take a solo and then you put his, and get through and look at you and you say, my turn? What am I going to play after that? What, you left, left, left nothing left for me to play. Mm -hmm. I remember a time Fred got through with a solo mm -hmm. and everybody just he looked around at his band and everybody just laid their instruments down. Really? There's nothing left to be said. Good Lord. Wow. There's nothing left to be said. Fred, you said it all. Mm -hmm. You have nothing <coughs> to say on this thing. Mm -hmm. They put their basses down, the drummer got up. I put my horn, and the horn players put their horns down. Mm -hmm. To me, that was not a put down, that was a high compliment. Right, right. Yeah, There's nothing left to be said. Fred Anderson has said it all. Mm -hmm. You know? Wow. And, and well, being at <clears throat> playing with him every night is 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 a very can be very rather stressful, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can attest to that. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I think uh, <clears throat> in my mind, his um, being a saxophone player, his vocabulary, <clears throat> and how he manipulates the vocabulary into his own language, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he has developed his, his own language that goes with his sound. Um, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, and now in his latter year, later years, he, does, uh, he, he has some preconceived notions, but he comes out and it's just one thing, everything connects, mm -hmm. you know. It connects for his uh, beginning, a middle, and, and an end. It, it, there's a narrative, uh, and he plays the whole range of the saxophone, mm -hmm. from top to bottom. Uh, I like that in him. Uh, and he's a he's a man of uh, he's not a man of a lot of words, you know. And uh, but sometimes well, I'll be playing at the Velvet. I'll bring my group in and. You know, I'm thinking that I, I, we did pretty well. And uh, at the end of the night, he'll put some obscure Charlie Parker tune on. And you know, like, all right, this is the deal, you know. <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah, what you did was cool, but he, here's the real deal. <laughs> you, know, you know, some bird yeah. is just going crazy, you know. And, you know, and uh, I just look at him and say, man, it was... Why you got to do that, you know? <laughs> I was with Fred one time, and I, we was with somebody and was putting Bird down, mm. bad mouthing Bird. Mm. Fred was ready to challenge him right there on the spot. Oh, yeah. Fred was going to fight this guy. <laughs> Fred's a Bird fan from, from way back. Right. And speaking of, of, of Fred and, uh, you know, his, his, his ideas on the horn, and long before John Coltrane was taking 45 minute solos, mm -hmm. Fred was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. One of the most long winded players right. <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. 
You remember what we used to do? Ben, well, uh, uh, Fred, he, he, he has a tendency, when he really gets into his music, he gets in that crouch. Right. We'd go, we'd go down the street and have a drink. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we'd come back and he was still in it, you know. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> He's still exploring. Yeah, yeah, you know. A couple of weeks ago, I was uh, speaking with William Parker, and uh, mm -hmm. he was telling me the same thing, basically, where uh, he had just done uh, uh, a date in Paris with uh, Fred mm -hmm. and, uh, and Hamid. And he said, you know, when Fred goes into that crouch, yeah. he says, you know, watch out. And uh, he said, uh, on that uh, concert in particular, he said he had heard Fred go to places in the music that he had never heard him do before. It's like, you know, at, at his age and everything, but he's still playing yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. as powerful as ever and just going further. And yeah. It's like incredible to think. Fred did something in Europe. The first night we played there, and then we'll forget this. And Fred just struck out. Normally he doesn't do this, but he struck out with body and soul. Mm. Mm. And I regret to this day that that was not recorded. Yeah. You've never heard body and soul done like this. Mm. And to my knowledge, to my memory, recollection, I never heard him play Body and Soul again. Is that right? He just did it that one night in in Europe, mm -hmm. Austria somewhere, you know. What I mean? <coughs> well, just last week he, he was, we were all playing tunes, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, I told him, I said, Fred, I like the way you play tunes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. well, you play How High the Moon and stuff like that. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. On that gig that, that we were on together? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perdido, all that stuff. Mm. Wow. Well, you see, before Fred was, was playing so-called outside, so-called free jazz, that's what he was playing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. He has that very strong foundation. He got the mm -hmm. roots. Of, of what, what roots, the about. roots of the music. You, you can't mm -hmm. start out trying to play like Coltrane and, and on it. You gotta go on, you gotta each on with that. How do you both think uh, Fred Anderson should be uh, remembered in, in the history of jazz uh, in the future? How do you think that, what would his rightful place be? Innovator. Uh, father of a whole lot of musicians. The, the list is long. You know, and I'm sure Will would attest to this. Anybody that has played with him feels honored to say, "I have played with Fred Anderson." Right. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't, you know, I don't care who you can say that you have played with. In my opinion, unless you played with Fred, mm -hmm. you've missed something. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> master, improviser. Um, yeah, he had a lot of babies. <laughs> we all came out of Fred. We all did. Um, a great strategizer, you know. He always used to tell me, y figure out a way to do it, you know. <clears throat> figure out a way to do it. And, uh, you know, he persevered. I, I never knew that this journey was going to be like this, you know. Now he's <clears throat> got a brand new club, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, his presence is so strong that, you know, uh, as as well as being a, a, a great musician in <clears throat> in the alternative genre, he has encouraged so many people, mm -hmm. you know to play, especially young people um, coming up and they have a whole whole nother zone of young young people coming up who mm -hmm. worship Fred, you yeah, know, not yeah. just older guys. <clears throat> so, you know, entrepreneur, strategizer, club owner, um, um, survivor, mm -hmm. 
you know. He's the only jazz musician, if I can use that term, that I know of, know or know of, who's got his own jazz club. Right. Yeah. I can't think of anybody else around the country that's doing that. Not that it's lasted this long. Well, you know, the the Brecker guys, they, they, they do they some did, stuff. They did, they do. But, um, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. I think in New York. It's in like New York. The South or something. It's the, right. right. Yeah. But on the alternative scene, you know, and it's flourishing and getting ready to move to a, another level. And just a, a lot of integrity. Right. You know, that's the thing. He doesn't bullshit. You know, there's a lot of integrity. Yeah. So... I'll tell you what else he's a master at, other than music. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know if you know this, B, but Fred is a master chef. Is that right? Oh, oh good really? googity boogity woogity, man. Yeah? He hoards it all. He won't share it. He'll share the music, but he won't share that. He <laughs> said, what you eating, man? Oh, just some... Uh, <laughs> nothing, man. <laughs> Right. Yeah, he cooks. He, uh, His late wife, she used to say that uh, he'd put her out of the kitchen. Is that he'd be right? coming in, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you put this in? And did you put that in? She would she'd say, oh, look, you finish cooking. I'm going to sit on my butt. You finish cooking. <laughs> these he'd, guys he'd used do to, it. You know, I'm a youngster, and these guys were talking about, well, they got chicken legs on sale at Jewel for, <laughs> for about, I said, what? These yeah. guys would be talking about this shit. You know, mm -hmm. they got chicken legs on sale and blah, 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 and a pot. <laughs> a friend it's, would call that econing. You got the econing. I'm doing things. Right, they'd be talking about, you know, e uh, yeah. gifts of the, gifts of the, uh, the kitchen, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. I, you know, I couldn't give it that, but. Uh, <laughs> I could, because after my mama died, I had no wife uh -huh. and no lady friend, so I had to learn how to cook, so I had to cook for myself. Uh -huh. And so, I got all my cooking tips from men. From Fred? From Fred and, and other men. Okay, all right. You know, they say that cooking is supposed to be woman's work. Mm. Oh. If that's the case, why is it that all the great chefs around the world are men? Right, exactly. And Fred could be a, a head <laughs> chef in anybody's restaurant. Mm -hmm. I've told him that to his face. Is that right? Oh man, that's too much work. I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's about painting a picture and telling a story. You know, a whole lot of guys, they want to get up on the stage and show you how high and how fast they, they can play and how much they've practiced. Mm -hmm. But if you can't paint a picture mm -hmm. and tell a story, that's what music is supposed to be about. Right. Painting a picture and telling a story. Technique, jobs, it's a means to an end, not an end in itself. Right. You know? And uh, that, that is a good example of that. You can't find anybody with more chops on the instrument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But everything he plays makes musical sense. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Like you just said, you won't do that, all that screeching and, and, and make a funny noise and all that. He doesn't do that. He, everything he plays makes musical sense.
Yeah. Sounded sounded really nice to me, Billy. That was, that was Fred Anderson's black woman. Uh huh. Okay. What about what time did he uh, write that? Back in the 60s, 60s, 70s. Is that right? Uh huh. Okay.
We spread in the new Velvet Lounge um, <clears throat> tons of, su of success, really. And uh, it's, I'm just glad I met Fred. I was going to just say that <clears throat> the Lord blessed me to be able to play, know and play with a lot of great musicians. And Fred is right up there with, at the top of the list, the best of them. Through Fred, I got to play in Europe. No, you wouldn't know who I was if it wasn't for Fred Anderson. You, personally. Probably not. Probably. But most, maybe, most likely maybe. not. Yeah. You know, and so. Uh, I, I'm sure you would have made your reputation anyway, Billy. I don't think so. No, I think so. You're, you're a great player. Fred uh, got me originally. You know, you're talking about the AACM. Mm -hmm. I was one of the uh, original members. That's right. Of course, you know, by means and by way of Fred Anderson. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I was introduced to the Swedenborgian uh, uh, train of thought through Fred indirectly, because Fred had taken me over to Mulholland's house. Mm -hmm. Through Fred, I knew people like Vaughn Freeman, mm -hmm. whom I wouldn't have known otherwise. Right. Yeah. You know? And you know what I felt, how humble and, 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 and undeserving that I was. I had a gig with Fred and Vaughn Freeman, mm -hmm. both of them. And you know, one of them at a time is rough enough. I had to play with both them cats on one gig. Right. I'm saying, oh, what am I doing up here with these giants, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've been blessed. I've been, I've been blessed to get on the stage and play with people like Fred Anderson and Vaughn Freeman, mm -hmm. Will Perry, mm -hmm. I was blessed. All the, you know, all of the guys I was telling you about, I've I played with before. Mm -hmm. But playing with Fred was another, just another, another, another mm -hmm. vibe, another groove. Right. Yeah. You know, and you know he, he was such an inspiration to so many people. Mm -hmm. You know. So many, so many. So that I think that's what you ask about how he would be remembered. Mm -hmm. I think he would be remembered as an institution, mm -hmm. a musical institution. Mm -hmm. You know, because he paved the way for so many people. Mm -hmm. you know? And 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 you gave me the idea of owning a club. That that's a new thing. Mm -hmm. A jazz musician, musician 
owning a jazz club. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no one else has thought of that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not, not really. exactly new, but to have survived this long yeah. is, is pretty, uh, <clears throat> it's incredible. Yeah, you especially know. with the challenges of, of the new music, right. uh, of course. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. A club that... that, that, that is this world-renowned? World-renowned and, and, and features new music. You got a lot of jazz clubs, right? Yeah. But they don't dealing with new music. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good example. Joe Siegel's uh, jazz showcase. I'm not putting him down. Mm -hmm. I've heard great people there, mm -hmm. but nowhere will you hear new music like you can at the Velvet Lounge. Oh, right. Sure. Nowhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how it happened, but you're you're right. Uh, he is an institution in the Velvet Lounge is an institution in Chicago and yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, one of the universities wanted to uh, partner with him. Mm -hmm. um, Did they? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think it was That's Roosevelt. a good idea out there. You know. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, to, to help keep his, this thing afloat and to attach their name to Fred, you know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, I had a very mystical experience though with Fred. Mm -hmm. when I was playing with him. In, in Evanston, that place over there I forgot South Everston over there on Greenleaf or somewhere over there. There's a place over there. The and Amazing we, Grace? No. <coughs> it wasn't a known place. Mm. And we played, me and Fred played, and nobody showed up. Mm. And I'm all despondent, you know, mm. nobody showed up to play this music. Fred told me to keep on plugging. I said, man, ain't nobody, nobody wants to hear this kind of music we playing. Yeah, man, we got to hang in there. So this particular night, we played, and I said, oh, man, I looked out to the audience. There was none. And all of a sudden, I could perceive the place was just full of higher beings. Mm -hmm. And they were all cheering and applauding. Mm -hmm. And I said, what is this? Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, don't feel bad. We hear you. And I never felt bad about the music after that. Yeah. That's heavy. That is really That actually. Mm -hmm. And another time I had a, a similar mystical experience and I was laying down and I could hear them, or call them angels or whatever, mm -hmm. singing a tune that I know. And they, they said, hey, they repeated what they said before. Don't be discouraged about lack of acceptance. Mm -hmm. We hear you. So when I'm playing to this day, that's who I'm playing for, mm -hmm. the angels. I don't play for mere mortals anymore. They're welcome to listen. But I'm not playing for them, I'm playing for them. And him, of course, mm -hmm. because he gave me his talent in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, you know, you were talking about uh, Fred going overseas. You know, that movie Bird. Mm -hmm. Bird's playing in Paris, and they're throwing roses at his feet. And he comes back to the stage, he can't even get a gig in a joint named after him, Birdland. So it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't just Fred, the cats have always gone through that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, re, I just quoted Fred, Dizzy yeah. as saying, uh, jazz is too good for Americans. You know what they asked Miles when he went into that fusion stuff? Miles, what are you doing? He didn't say anything. Miles, what are you doing? He just kept, he kept on, Miles, what are you doing? He looked around and said, you know, people want shit. I agree with both men yeah. wholeheartedly. <coughs> Jazz too good for Americans, and people want shit. Yeah, that is uh, unfortunate. I, remember I bumped into a saxophone player friend of mine. You know him, uh, Paul Hertzog. Paul Hertzog. He said he had a gig with a tux on, made good money. You know. mm -hmm. And he said, and the music sucked. Yeah. He said, man, you know, it seems like the more money you make with music, the worse the music is. Yeah. I said, man, tell me about it. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the gigs that you play making some decent money, you ain't playing no music. Yeah. 
You ain't playing nothing. Yeah. I, I, I hate to say that about my homeland.